friends welcome back today we'll see interthread communication so to understand interthread communication let us look into a particular example say for example there are two threads the first thread is called as producer thread and the other thread is called as consumer thread and this producer and consumer thread are sharing a resource so say that this is the resource which is n okay so n is a variable and producer and consumer both wants to share this particular resource and here the problem is the producer will be producing the numbers from 1 2 and so on and he will be placing uh, this one into this uh, shared resource and after producer produces uh, a number and puts it in the sh shared resource the consumer has to consume this one after the consumer has consumed this one only the producer will be putting the next number into n okay so to check whether the consumer has consumed the value or not so there is one condition check over here so that condition check will be either true or false okay so if uh, initially it will be false because the consumer didn't take the value once the consumer takes or consumes the value in n then this value will become this condition will become true okay so say producer has produced one and he has post, put the one inside this n okay now say consumer has taken this one okay as soon as the consumer has taken this one he will be making this condition to be true okay friends now producer will not simply put 2 over here because he don't know whether the consumer has taken the value or not so the producer will be repeatedly checking whether this condition has become true or not so repeatedly checking whether this condition has become true or not is called as a polling friends okay java do not have polling and java has avoided polling with an elegant methods such as wait, notify and notify all. What is the problem with polling? The problem with polling is because the producer and consumer, okay, both repeatedly checks for this condition, where the producer will be always checking whether this condition is true and consumer will be checking whether this condition is false. So they keep repeatedly checking whether this condition is true or false. Okay, so this will waste lot of CPU cycles okay so this po polling will waste lot of cpu cycles so and a program written in such a manner if you are using polling inside your program it means that your program is an inefficient code okay so and java uses these elegant methods which are wait notify and notify all these three methods are used for inter-thread communication itc and these three threads are there in the object class. This is a very important interview question and it's an MCQ. Okay, so in which class these three methods are there? Generally, because these are studied in threads, students generally get confused that they are in the thread class. No friends, these three are there in the object class because these three have to be available to the other classes as well. Okay. Now, the wait method, all these three methods are the final methods and wait method is having another overloaded wait method is also there which will be taking the time into it. So, it's, it will be a timed wait and uh, it, it throws interrupted exception. And what is wait? Wait tells the calling thread to give up the monitor. Here, don't get confused with the monitor. Monitor means it is a lock okay lock of the shared resource okay so tells the calling thread to give up the lock and go to sleep it will give up the lock as i told you in the previous uh, uh, class like a uh, life cycle of a thread i told you the difference between wait and sleep sleep method will keep the lock to itself and suspend the threads execution for the specific period of time that is mentioned in the sleep method but wait method will release the lock it will leave the lock and go to the sleep okay so that's the difference between wait and sleep it will release the monitor and go to sleep until some other thread enters the same monitor and calls notify and now coming to notify okay so notify will make the thread which is waiting to 
awake. Okay, so it will notification is sent through the notify method. Wakes up the first thread that called wait on the same object. Notify all will wake up all the threads. Okay, and uh, that called wait on the same object, the highest priority thread will run first. Okay, so these are the three methods which are wait, notify and notify all. Okay, now one very important point that is, I have put it in note over here, that all these three methods like wait, notify, notify all can be called only from within a synchronized method. Okay, so we will try to use wait, notify into a program and this is a classic problem which is producer consumer problem and we'll write the java program now well friends uh, producer consumer problem is a classic example of interthread communication the synchronization problem uh, so we'll just try to understand it okay say there is there are two threads uh, say producer thread and consumer thread and uh, here the producer will be producing the data and will be putting in a common shared variable or buffer. You can imagine this to be a buffer and the producer will be producing the data, generating the data and the data will be put inside this buffer. Okay. And once the producer produces data, data and puts it in the buffer, the producer will notify consumer that I have put some data, you can now consume it and the producer will go to the waiting state okay and the consumer will now retrieve the data from the buffer okay and notify the producer that he had done consuming the data now it is the producer turn to produce the data so he will notify the consumer will notify the producer okay and the consumer will go to the waiting state based on the flag value the producer and consumer will be going to the wait state okay so if the flag value is uh, false okay so it means that the consumer is in waiting state okay so if it is true then the producer will be in a waiting state okay so here to uh, do this interthread communication we'll be using the methods which is wait and notify okay so we'll just try to understand this say producer has produced the value one okay so this one will be put in this variable over here okay once the value is put over here okay so after putting one the producer will go to the waiting state and also he will notify okay so he will notify the consumer and also he'll change this value to be true okay and uh, he will notify the consumer now the consumer will consume this one and go to waiting state okay so he'll notify he'll consume this one he'll go to the waiting state and then inform the producer and change this flag again to false okay and notify and send notify to the producer now the producer will produce two okay so now two will be here okay again after producing two the producer will go to the waiting state and then notify this particular consumer that he has put the data inside the buffer and the consumer can consume it okay so this keeps repeating now what will be the output friends so the output will be first the producer has to put the data so what is the value he has put in the buffer one okay so the data generated is one so now the consumer will say got one okay after that so we can uh, the producer will be producing two here the order of output is predictable friends okay so in the previous cases we have seen that in multi-threading when multiple threads are executing you cannot uh, guarantee on the output that you get okay so guaranteed kind of output will not be uh, got okay but here when you synchronize the threads you can be sure that this kind of output will be produced okay so then i am saying got two and so on okay so this repeats yeah, as you can see the producer produces then the consumer consumes then the producer produces, and the consumer consumes okay so even in the next case the producer will be producing three in case and the consumer will get three okay so this will be uh, how this program works friends okay but in case if you are not using uh, uh, wait and notify you cannot pre predict on how the output will be in so there is a class q inside the q class there is a variable which is n so this is the shared result source and there is a flag okay so for condition check and all that and then you're having this uh, get method 
and uh, see friends i already told you that wait and notify should be used only from the synchronized methods okay so it should be used in from a synchronized context only if you are not using this synchronized keyword before the methods and try to use wait and notify you will be getting illegal monitor state exception okay so uh, this is mandatory you have to put the synchronized keyword and uh, and if not flag initially it is false okay so since the producer get is uh, get is the consumer uh, uh, code okay and this put is the uh, producer code okay so now coming to the consumer code consumer will be only consuming once the producer produces the data so that's the reason not flag okay not false is true so this condition is true initially and uh, since it is true the consumer is in the waiting state waiting for the producer to generate the data since wait will be throwing interrupted exception you have to put it in try and catch uh, and so that's why we have written wait in the try and catch okay right and uh, this is an interrupted exception and this uh, will be printed on the screen in case the interrupted exception occurs okay. once the producer produces the data what happens is the flag values will be changed and also the consumer will be getting the thread will be getting a notification okay so the thread now will say got n so got n is for our understanding okay so to understand the output uh, we are putting this uh, statement so got and then plus n the value of n will be printed and once uh, it has received the data the consumer thread again will go to the waiting state by notifying the producer okay so false is equal uh, flag is equal to false and notify notify is to notify the producer that okay i am done consuming the data okay so this is a very simple code of the consumer friends okay now coming to the producer code okay so inside the producer code uh, so we are passing in n okay so um the n value is got and e for false because producer only have to generate the data so initially the flag value is false so e false so this uh, will not execute so it will come over here this dot n is equal to n so it is uh, placing the data inside the variable n and then it is making the flag to be true and it is putting the value on the screen and then it is to consume the data so it is notifying the consumer who is in the waiting state that to take the data that he has put inside n okay so that thread has put in n so again this will go this method will execute and then uh, because uh, we have set the false to be true now this flag will become true and the con producer will go to the waiting state till the consumer receives the data okay after the consumer receives the data again this will notify this thread okay so producer thread and the producer thread will print it and do all that and again notify the consumer thread okay so this happens repeatedly apart from this uh, class there are uh, two more classes i'll just write those classes also for you on the whiteboard so we have seen class queue inside class queue we are having this put and get methods okay so we'll just try to see what is the producer class the class producer implements runnable okay interface and uh, since from the producer we are calling the put method okay so we need the instance reference variable of class queue so that's what we have declared over here and then this is the constructor of the producer class inside the constructor we are actually initializing or initializing the reference variable okay and then we are creating a thread class and passing the runnable object inside this the producer runnable object and the, we, are, we are starting the thread as uh, start method is executed it internally invokes the run method so inside the run method we said int i is equal to 0 and this is an infinity loop okay so it keeps on producing the data and the data is nothing but the value of i so initially i is passed into uh, this put method and then once the consumer consumes the data again the next value of i is put okay so q dot put method uh, put method is inside the class q okay so we are calling that method by passing i as an argument initially zero will be passed and later on it gets incremented so on so this is the producer class friends now coming to the consumer class okay so the consumer class is also a thread which implements runnable interface 
so again uh, the same reason because the get method is there inside the class queue you need the reference variable this is the initialization and then um, you're passing the consumer uh, runnable object into the thread and we are saying t dot start as soon as you say t dot start these are two different threads friends which will be started simultaneously but the only way we are synchronizing them is uh, by using wait and notify okay inside the run method again this is an infinite loop and we are saying q dot get method is called okay so inside the get method we already seen what is there okay so this is the driver code okay so this is the driver class uh, inside the driver class we are creating instance of the class q inside the producer we are passing it we are creating the instance of producer and we are passing q as a as an argument and then the consumer since i already told you that this while loops inside the consumer uh, uh, class and the producer class both are uh, running for infinity so you need to have a mechanism to stop it uh, so you have to press ctrl c once uh, bit okay friends okay so this is uh, so there are four classes here in this program one is class queue the other is class producer and the third one is class consumer and the fourth one is the driver code which is class pc demo okay so we'll uh, i'll show you the execution now